Hey folks, how's it going? So in this video then I'm going to offer some uh, ideas and things to think about on the subject of how to evolve your soul, which is, uh, to me, pretty much the most important thing. Not the only thing going on, but everything really, in a way, is about soul evolution. That is, if you happen to believe in a soul. If not, then this is probably not your video, but you never know. So I first started meditating about 25 years ago. This was when I was a senior in high school. I was 16, and I uh, was taking this photography class in which I didn't need the class to graduate. And so I decided to focus on my core classes um, in order to make sure I got good grades in those and, and then kind of screw off a little bit in my other classes in order to not uh, um, expend as much time and energy on them. And so I had, had this photography class, and there was a dark room in there that uh, was not used because there was like a crack in it or something. It was like a, like a basically just a wooden box made for uh, um, changing film in. And uh, it wasn't used, and so I started going into this, this dark room, this wooden box, closing the door. It was still basically dark. And I would spend most of the class just meditating. Um, as, as best as I remember, I, I still did get some photography done, but um, I don't think that I had read med about meditation or anything. It was just an idea. I just wanted to explore um, the nature of my consciousness, basically. And I found it fascinating to sit there in the dark, just, you know, traveling through my mind and, and uh, seeing what was there. So that was the beginning of my spiritual path, basically. And I have uh, done much since then. And so I'm just going to offer a uh, few ideas, some things to think about. These are basically just some, some little things to um, kind of chew on that they could all basically be, you know, longer videos under themselves. But I just wanted to uh, throw some things out there just to kind of uh, ponder um, on the general path of life and uh, discovering the nature of the soul. So the first concept here is that of breaking down the barriers between your own consciousness and universal consciousness. So as I understand it then, all consciousness comes from the same source and is simply different fragmented expressions of what was at one time a universal consciousness. And so I've had experiences of my own both in the course of um, meditation, the use of psychedelics and whatnot, and I'll just uh, be honest, at one time I was incredibly stoned, and, uh, and I've, I've had this kind of same realization uh, on multiple occasions, but one time in partic particular that I uh, basically journeyed, you know, deep into my own consciousness, down into the subconscious, and I could uh, very sort of viscerally experience and and know that uh, my own consciousness was simply part of universal consciousness experiencing itself as a separate being. And so there's the uh, analogy that I'm sure I'm not the only person to, to throw out there, but that we are kind of like islands in the sea, which appear to be separate looking from above just a hunk of uh, land surrounded by water, but that is in fact a projection of the earth. If you go down, then you will uh, eventually connect to the rest of the earth, and it is just part of the, um, the greater whole, which is protruding from the ocean. And our consciousness is like this. And so to keep this in mind, and to uh, seek ways to sort of chip away at that experience of separation, and how exactly to do that is, um, you know, that's what lots of various uh, spiritual tools are for. But just to have that, that concept in mind that, that uh, we are not a separate being, we are connected to source energy within our own consciousness. And with that in mind, with the intention of, of uh, seeking the, the deeper parts of oneself, then you can start to intuitively 
feel and experience that connection to divine source within um, in a more substantial, more real way. And that is a great way to tap into your intuition and to tap into source intelligence and information in order to receive uh, the, the insights, the perspective of the universal whole by um, chipping away at that, that experience of separation within yourself so that you are tapping into the, the greater consciousness and, and thus um, are, are connected to a source of life and energy and vitality and information that can greatly shape your uh, perspective and your experience um, in the world. So as I said that we are basically a fragmented um, piece of the universal whole, in the same way that our own individual consciousness has, has become fragmented, and through various uh, spiritual practices and exercises and techniques, then we can access other parts of our own consciousness in order to bring them into um, a focalized point within our conscious awareness. Consciousness can become diffuse. Uh, one example is if you are um, continually uh, stuck on thinking about the past or worrying about and projecting forwards thinking about the future, then your consciousness is diffused. You're not focused into the moment. You are um, focused into the past, focused into the future, and therefore your consciousness is not unified and uh, focused and being utilized to its fullest extent in the present moment, in your, in your current situation experience, as it can be. And so this is very much the point of meditation, is to bring the focus of your consciousness more into the present moment. But also there is the reality of the, the subconscious and it is not inevitable that the subconscious must all remain subconscious. We can access our subconscious and in so doing we can make our subconscious more conscious and bring more of ourself into um, our conscious awareness. The process of going to sleep, of being less awake, less aware, less conscious, is not a matter of um, parts of yourself disappearing or, or dying or ceasing to exist, but a matter of parts of your consciousness uh, falling asleep essentially, falling into the subconscious where they then rule your life and create your reality without your conscious awareness. But through conscious intention, then you can uh, become more conscious by accessing your subconscious, by accessing these lost parts of oneself, and uh, bringing them into the wholeness of your conscious awareness, so that you are operating in your life from a, a place of being more conscious and less subconscious, more awake and aware and less asleep. And uh, so we're talking about subconscious belief patterns, um, very much a matter of rep repressed and denied emotions, which then uh, motivate us to do certain things. We act out of fear, we act out of anger without realizing it because it is part of our sub subconscious mind, our subconscious being. And then we do things, we, we have uh, spontaneous impulses, that are not creative, um, uh, positive impulses, but destructive, negative impulses of seeking to avoid what is going on within, basically. And so a lot of people's actions are about trying to stop things from happening, trying to stop seeing parts of themselves, trying to stop uh, parts of themselves from, from uh, emerging, coming forth. And so instead of living our lives subconsciously, unconsciously, 
by reacting to to uh, what is within our subconscious, we can start to dredge up this denied stuff within us um, in order to uh, transmute it, work it through, transform it, and thus bring a part of ourselves into our conscious awareness um, so that we are operating from a place of greater um, unity and wholeness of being.